In this video I'm going to be looking at this. This is the Lumix G100 and I'm going to be using it as a vlogging camera. Join me. Roll titles. <music> Hi YouTube, Brian James, I'm Mega Four Thirds Guy with you on the first of two videos where I'm reviewing the Lumix G100, a bleak G110 in different markets. And, and this one I'm going to be looking at the video and especially the vlogging properties of it. Now, before I start, before I start doing any of the review, there's a couple of points to make. First of all, Lumix, you're missing a trick. And there's a few people said this to me already. This camera is too good to be called a vlogging camera. It's, you, you know, really, it's a camera which is capable of vlogging and there's a difference there the camera itself is superb it has extra vlogging features on it which make vlogging easier so don't write it off just as being a vlogging camera which an awful lot of the internet has done the other thing on this one is the internet itself it did not get some poor reviews in the early days but they were mainly testing pre-production or early production with um, firmware version 1.0 we're up to firmware version 1.3 now and an awful lot of the, the features that were overlooked at the time are now operational on the camera which is great but also again a lot of the internet was seeing this as a vlogging camera only and overlooking its best features it is a fully featured micro four thirds replaceable lens camera which has got some fantastic vlogging features and there's another thing as well always got to be something to start off with another thing as well if you're a specialist photography and do high-speed sports photography, if you're into nature photography and astral photography, this camera can do those things. But you'll be sitting there saying, well, it's no good as a G9. It's no good compared to an OM-1. It's not, it's not meant to be. If you're into those things as a specialty and that's where the majority of photography goes, hit the little stop button now. I won't be offended and go to the next video. However, if you're somebody who is um, just wanting the general camera which has got some fantastic features on keep watching because I think you're going to be amazed by this one so what, what's the spec on this one I'm not going to go deep into the specs but it's a super super lightweight camera um, I'll put the specs in, the, uh, in the, the details below rather than read them all out here but basically the camera with its battery with a memory card with the microphone on top and with its own tripod stand come selfie stick weighs just over 500 grams it's about certainly less than 600 grams including the microphone it is absolutely fantastic it really is it's got some fantastic features as well for the sound the inbuilt sound and you'll find some of those as we go through but it's using um, Nokia, a Nokia system the OZO system from Nokia which uses three microphones two towards the front one to the rear where you can direct the sound to get the best balance and to cut out as much background sound as possible so if you're selfieing from the front, especially if you've got the screen pulled out, automatically switching into selfie mode for you, very interesting, then you'll find that um, it switches to the front or the tracking microphones and it doesn't use the back mic, so it cancels a lot of that sound out. And I've just said tracking, so what's that? Well, this technology is quite clever. If you look on the screen, you'll find that uh, you've got the usual sort of thing because it's got the autofocus and just look at the screen here. But when it uses a tracking mode for its built-in microphones, you'll find a sort of a couple of green parts either side, and it uses the um, the autofocus to track the face and to switch the gain on the microphones. So as I move off to this side, if I was using the internal mics, which I'm not, I've got an external road mic on at the moment, it would give more gain to this side microphone and less gain to that side. Moving across, you get more gain here and less gain here. So the idea is the sound on the stereo stage will track the face. Very clever. The rear mic, if you're turning the camera around and you're using it to do more sort of uh, shots where you're doing a, a descriptive of a scene and the camera's pointing away from you, you can switch it to the rear microphone and the front ones are disabled so you don't get all the sound from the front, it'll just get your narration nice and clear and crisp. One of the problems with this microphone as well, of course, though, is it doesn't have a pop filter on uh, of any description and you're going to get wind and noise and things picked up by it. Hopefully not too much on this one because I've got the Rode Video Micro external mic with its dead cat on. But you'll still get some wind noise because it is quite windy here at talking today. But when you look at the videos later on you'll find that I'm just using the internal mics. And it may be very windy. I haven't listened to them, haven't looked at them properly yet. But also, when you're using those, 
they are an internal mic they're not a shotgun mic and they're not super sensitive so when you close up you'll get good sound quality so for doing things like selfies it should be okay but if you get further away like I am here uh, a little bit further away from the camera you're not going to get such good results from it so just bear that in mind but as a run and gun camera we can pick it up just use it and get adequate sound out of it it's fantastic and in reality it's two steps up from what you're using as a mobile phone for selfies. If you're a mobile phone user for selfies, you've got that. You've got no replaceable lenses. You've got your microphones fairly fixed inside. And on things like Apple, you have to use connectors for the lightning or Wi-Fi microphones to be able to connect. Now, you can't just plug a 3.5mm jack in, which this camera has a 3.5mm jack by, for the sound, by the way. If you're getting up to the next level, you're getting onto things like the ZV-1 from Sony, which is being produced primarily as a vlogging camera. But of course it doesn't have the ability to change lenses. This is a full featured Micro Four Thirds camera using the full range of the Micro Four Thirds system lenses from Lumix, Olympus and all the other third party manufacturers who make lenses for it. You can also use the adapters if you want to and um, use uh, legacy lenses. Absolutely superb and adaptable. So this gives you as a vlogging camera a lot more than you just have um, for vlogging. It gives you the ability to put anything from uh, say a 7mm all the way up to a 4 or 500mm Micro Four Thirds lens. From any of those lines, just plug it on and it will work. Now as I say, I'm going to hit um, stills in the next video. But I think when you see that, you're going to see that the camera itself is superb. But as a, a video camera in itself, let's have a look at some of the features on it. One of the things I love, it's got the, on the, the screen at the side, it's got the red mark around the outside, just as the uh, G9 has. Very, very useful when you're doing selfie videos, so you know that the videos, and I can see this from some distance away, so if I set this up as a camera looking over a scene, I can see instantly that the um, scene is being recorded without any problem, because I can see that red line. It's got all the, um, the, the different types of scenes and the different type of effects that you're going to get in the fixed cameras. Really, really useful for that and it can be applied on the video just as easily as well. The lens which comes with it is the wonderful little 12 to 32 millimeter a 3.5 to 5.6 pancake lens. Now this is a lens I already had and I've been using it for a while. But you'll find that there's a, a mention to it in that review above. But this lens is absolutely superb. Inbuilt stabilization because the stabilization on this it, the camera doesn't have IBIS as such, where you have the, the sensor moving uh, to compensate. It has an electronic uh, stabilization, and what that does is you lose some of the pixels around the outside of the screen, and it'll digitally move the picture uh, around so that you get a stabilized image. But if you have a camera lens which has in body stabilization on it, it will utilize this without crop. So if you want to try that, that's very very good. I've also been told by a few people to try some of the other lenses to get around the stabilization because they're better. So I've brought out my 12 to 60, uh, 3.5 to 5.6, which is one of my favorite lenses. And um, we'll see how that performs in comparison to this lens in some of the live tests in a few minutes. Now I'm going to go inside in, indoors. We'll carry this video on there because it's starting to get a bit cold. It's starting to get a bit windy. Join me indoors. But before I do, have a look at some of the run and gun shots that I've done and we'll see you inside in a few minutes. Well, as you can see, I'm at the wonderful Talking Tarn again in the background. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a few little um, switches on this one. I'm going to do a very, few very short clips with different setups. So we're starting off on this one with the um, Lumix 12-60 to 3.5-5.6G Vario lens. This is a lens, if you look at the video above, you'll find it's probably one of my favorite lenses to use. Um, it came out equal top with a 17mm Olympus Prime when I did my five budget lenses and it really is a good lens. It's a little bit on the large side for the size of this camera. It is quite big compared to the camera because the camera is tiny but it's quite light so I'm still holding it here and it's not too difficult to handhold. Um, I'm also using the tracking on the sound. I've got it on the selfie, selfie mode. You'll see me looking across at the screen every so often. And I've got it on to the audio tracking. So hopefully that's going to be able to, to take in the movements as I alter where I am the position on the screen. So let's take a few paces with this one. The electronic viewfinder is switched off. So I've just got the cameras um, stabilized. Sorry, I've still got the. I've only got the lenses stabilization to see how we get on. Now remember as well. Um, I've said this on a few other videos. I've got a, a bit of a knackered hip, so I'm not the smoothest of walkers at the best of times. So you're going to get some movement, but let's see how it works just with me with a gentle stroll here uh, for stabilization. So once again, this is the Lumix G Vario 12 to 60 f 3.5 to 5.6. 
um, without electronic stabilization, just using the in lens stabilization. So now I've changed to the 12 to 32 mil, which is effective the kit lens for this camera. And um, again, no electronic stabilization, just the in lens stabilization on this one, set to about 12 mil. And I've got the aperture fairly well open out on it. And again, I'm walking at the same sort of pace, just to give an idea as to how stable it is. Now, I'll be honest, this isn't the shooting mode that I would normally use. I don't tend to do these sort of um, selfie on the move type videos, but occasionally I do. Um, and I think if I was doing this, I'd probably be using the iPhone on the, uh, the DJI Osmo 5 um, selfie stick gimbal. Um, but it's worth seeing how it does on this video. So let's once again have a look at the 12 to 32 um, with electricity stabilization. So I'm going to leave the, um, the lens on 12mm still, but this is uh, using the electronic stabilisation on the standard setting. Now you'll see that it's cropped it in somewhat, I'm still on 12mm, but it has cropped it in a little bit. Um, again I'm walking in the same sort of way, so let's see what it's like in comparison to the previous two with the 12 to 32 and standard electronic stabilisation. Now, we've come to the high stabilisation on the electronic side. And as you can see, it's constantly cropped in. This is, um, well, I'll put my arm in its full, whack, full whack. But this is uncomfortable to carry to, because my arm fully outstretched. So where it has been up to now, it's a bit too close crop for me. Uh, but again, this is the 12 to 32 on uh, electronic stabilisation high. Now, this, just for the fun of it, I put my 14mm f2.5 prime lens on. And this has got um, standard electronic stabilisation. Because, as many of you pointed out in the previous video, yes, I made a mistake. Um, I won't see now in my old age. The 14mm 2.5 does not have in lens stabilisation. So this is using purely electronic stabilisation. But it's given me the opportunity to put this at the 2.5 on the aperture to get a slightly more out of focus background, hopefully. Now the final test on this one, I'm still on the 14mm f2.5 with the standard electronic stabilisation on. But I've switched microphones. I'm now, instead of using the internal microphones, I've switched my Rode Video Micro um, plug-in mic as the external one on top of the camera. Not a great deal of notice to wait because the, the microphone is very, very small and neat and light. So it's still easy to handhold. So hopefully the sound will be noticeably different, hopefully better, but not necessarily. You tell me in the comments below. Well, back inside again into the warmth out of the wind and things and a quick look through some of the, the spec side of things on this camera before I move further on. I hope uh, those videos worked out well. I hadn't actually seen them at the point of recording this. So um, I'm interested to see how they work out both for the sound and for the video. So let's have a look though at the specs. Well, first of all, the weight. 345 grams for the camera body, including the battery and the SD card, as I say. By the time you put the selfie stick come tripod on the bottom and also my little Rode Video Micro um, mic, it's on about 600 grams, which is about the same weight as the body alone of my G9. So this really is tiny. It's fabulous in the hands, it's got a really nice comfortable grip, uh, rubberized grip and a really good little rubberized thumb grip on the back. Um, the card, it's a single SD card in there, which is um, UH1, UHS-1. Um, it's an SD or an SDAC card that you can have in there. As I said, the sensor is 20.3 megapixels, ex exactly the same sensor as in the, uh, the G9. Obviously, you don't have so much of a backup insofar as a processing power, but the quality of the images which come out of this are identical to the G9. They really are in normal shooting. When you start getting into the high ISO and things, obviously, that's where the processing side comes in. But insofar as being able to capture the image, exactly the same as on its top of the range G9. Um, the in-body stabilisation is 5-axis unless you are shooting on 4K, which is 4-axis. Uh, you'll find there's a recurring theme in this. I'm not a great fan of the idea of 4K. Everybody seems to jump on 4K, 4K, 4K. To me, it's a fantastic mode, it really is, but it takes up a huge amount of processing time, it takes up a huge amount of disk space and card space. And about the best thing that we can do for it on the likes of YouTube and social media is use it so that you can crop in tightly. It, you know, it's to me anyway. That's it's it's a bit of a wasted thing for that. But it does have 4K. Now, some of the criticism has been that the 4K doesn't go quite far enough in the specs. But again, if you want a really high spec video camera, go buy yourself a GH5 Mark II or a GH6, or go and buy yourself a G9 because that'll do an awful lot of the good video stuff on with its updates. But they're all considerably more than this. You're paying 
what between four and five times the price, this price, of uh, for a, a G6 as you are for this. You pay your money, you get your you get your choice. 4K video will shoot in 24, 25, and 30p. Uh, 1080p video will shoot in 24, 25, 30, 50, and 60p. Um, it also has a wonderful little SQ knob on the top, which just stands for slow and quick mode. And that what that does is it changes the frame rate between four and 120 frames a second. Now, for the super slow motion, you do start to get into the fact that you've got quite a noisy thing on the eight times uh, eight times slow. So be aware of that. But again, it's a great little tool just to grab hold of and, and get some artistic shots out of and a very inexpensive camera without having to go to the expense of going to the big boys. So for that, it's great. And it's also very easy. It's just on a control dial. Put it in there, touch screen. And the touch screen on this, by the way, is very, very good, very sensitive, very fast responding. So touch onto that, decide which mode you want and just shoot. It's that simple. Um, EVF on this, uh, electronic viewfinder. That's the biggest letdown on this for me. It's a it's a 3.8 million dot viewfinder, electronic viewfinder. The viewfinder itself is okay. Um, the problem I have on it is the diopter. If you look on the side of the camera, the diopter has a, a sort of plastic shield around it so you don't knock it, which is fine. But the problem is when you're trying to get in to adjust the diopter with your eye in the right place, you can't get a finger or a thumb in to adjust it. So you've got to pull it away from your eye and adjust it slightly and put it back. There's no way to do a diopter control like that. You, you need to be looking at it to actually see when it's properly in focus. And as a 61-year-old whose eyesight's starting to change, it is a needed and important piece of kit on the camera. Bad one on that Lumix, we really need to get it so you can actually adjust that rather than taking, what, 10 minutes to adjust it properly because you're just messing around and keep on going in and out to it. The screen is a 3 inch LCD screen and it's 1.8 million dots. That doesn't sound a huge amount compared to some but it's actually perfectly adequate and I'll tell you what, it's probably one of the best flip out screens I've seen for doing vlogging because it is so bright and so clear. It's really fantastic. Going back to using my G, uh, my GX1, when you had that, if it was bright sunny, you couldn't even you couldn't see it properly. And of course, there was no EVF on that unless you bought the extra. On this one, even on the bright sunlight the other day, I was able to quite easily use the back screen very very comfortably. So it's a big improvement. Now this is also going to get kick the the, um, the the purists off. Oh, when they're going to get phase detect and all that. Look, it's got contrast um, autofocus with DFD. Um, and basically that is what you're going to get. It's no good whinging about it in the comments saying when we're going to get um, first detect. It's not going to be on this camera. It's not going to be on Lumix, I don't think, for a good while. They seem happy with that. And I'll tell you what, the, for an eye detect and a face detect, this is probably one of the best cameras I've seen insofar as being able to pick it up quickly on the face detect. It's, it, it's very, very good. Really impressed with it. 48 area autofocus on this. Um, it has an electronic focal plane type shutter which goes from 60 seconds to 1 16,000th of a second. Now it is an electronic shutter, that's fair enough. We, we understand that, uh, but I'll come back to that in, the, uh, in the, 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 the photo review that I do with this rather than the video one. Um, what it does have, which is really useful for videos, is both focus peaking, so you can easily see on a manual lens, such as that TT Artisan 50mm that I had the other day, that would fit under this and easily get into focus. And also zebra patterns as well, for seeing where your highlights and, and things are, very, very good. On the video side for um, video styles, you have Cine Lake D and Cine Lake V, and you've also got Vlog L if you want to do photo grading. And again, the work just very, very easy, very easy to access, very easy to get into those modes. And if that's what you're into, photo grading, or if you're into the more artistic shots, very, very easy. You can put it in monochrome very simply, you can do all sorts of things. It really is a, a full featured camera for that. Um, the Connection on this is a USB 2 connection, um, and it's a micro USB. I would have really liked to have seen a USB C. This came, this camera came out in 2020. USB C was very um, strong in the market and coming in then, and I'm disappointed that it's just a, a USB, um, a micro USB on this. Um, I don't like micro USBs at the best of times. I find them a very flimsy socket, um, but the USB C seems a, a lot more robust and certainly able to transfer more current and charge faster. Now on that you can charge directly from the USB with the battery in the camera. You don't need a battery charger for it, which I love because it means that if you go in between shoots you can just stick it into a car charger, charge it up as you go and you've got a full battery when you arrive at your destination. That's great. Speed the batteries though. Oh goodness, the battery life on this is poor. Um, 
you get about 320 shots if you're taking stills. Um, it's not great. It's a small battery. You could have a small battery and a small camera. There's, you know, there's, there's, there's the laws of physics. You can only fit a, you can't fit a quarter into a pint pot, as the saying used to go. But it is quite a, a small uh, capacity battery. Um, I was rather hoping the batteries from my uh, my GX one, I should say, would have fitted, but they don't. So never mind. Um, but the battery on this, it is poor life. I've ordered a couple of batteries, they're not that expensive. So I've got those two spare batteries coming through. And it's just a case of making sure they keep going, getting charged. But as I say, you can charge it in between journeys if it had gone there. You can also um, run it, of course, from a bigger battery pack. So if you want to get a, a, a battery block, you know, one of these um, charging packs that you can get. If it's got uh, USB outputs on it, you can plug it into the camera and the camera will charge from that as you're taking photographs. You can't charge a battery as you're taking photographs. If you've got a connect, an external connection on, it will take the power from the external connection, but it won't charge a battery up. Same as on the G9. Um, let's see, it's got also in there a micro HDMI lead, so if you want to put it out, and it's a clean signal out as well. So if you want to put this out to do things like, um, like um, uh, webcasts and things like that, you can do that. Now, on the early, some of the early reviews, when they were just using version 1.0 of the... Of the um, the, the, the firmware you couldn't do that there's a, uh, a there is a lumix program to allow you to do webcasting and things and use it as a, a, a web camera but it wasn't working on the first ones i believe although i haven't tried it i believe that on this which is current version 1.3 on the firmware that it does allow you to do that um it will it's got um, limitations on the the video length so if you're recording 4k you're limited to 10 minutes recording length you can stop it and just restart it again um, full HD on 50 or 60 um, P you're limited to 20 minutes and all the rest of the modes are limited to 29 minutes in the full HD they're not really big problems but uh, it's worth being aware of those things on there now before we go on don't forget if you have enjoyed this video if you find it useful hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already if not why not it's free and don't forget to get the notification bell to see updates of all new videos coming out and don't forget seriously give me a big thumbs up because that helps youtube's algorithms to spread the video to more and more people and if you do like it there's a little paypal link if you want to buy me a coffee and help support the channel by um, by helping it along now then thoughts on the camera oh, wow this is one of those cameras which i think the internet as i say has done it an injustice it's a damn good vlogging camera. Probably one of the best vlogging cameras you could ask for because of the size, the adaptability, and the, um, the the quality of it overall. The marketing of it, as I say, I think is totally wrong because they're pushing it out just as a vlogging camera. It's got so, so much more. It's really, really good. In the hand, it's one of those things, as I said a little earlier, it's comfortable, it's nice and easy to use, and it fits comfortably in the pocket, especially with the 12 to 32 mil um, lens on it, the kit lens which is super sharp lens. I mean, I've said this before, this lens is a fantastic little lens. There's, there's links above if you haven't seen it already to a previous video on this. But I find that this is great. You can stick it in your pocket, pull it out, take a photograph easily, take a video easily. And what that does is it inspires me to go out and take more photographs. Sometimes I get to the point where you, you look at the gear, especially the bigger gear, and you think, oh goodness, yeah. I've got to stop faffing about that. I just want to sh shoot and go, you know. It, and that's what I want to be able to do a lot of the time. And that's why mobile phones have proved so effective. Really have proved so effective. This is the next step up from mobile phones. And it is just as inspiring. And the other thing is as well, they made it very simple. There's a little button on the top which allows you to directly connect onto your smartphone or your smart device to transfer the pictures over easily. You need to use the... Um, the Panasonic um, Sync app, which is free on, on the app stores for whatever your device is. Uh, but once you've got that set up, and it doesn't take a great deal of setting up, transferring photographs is incredibly easy to your smart device. And then getting them uploaded from there, of course, is, is child's play on the social media, or if you want to put them into editors or whatever. And I'm going to do a, fo uh, a video on how I do my uh, editing on the smart devices very soon. I've had a few people ask me what my workflow is on that. So, in conclusion, Absolutely superb camera for vlogging. I can't think of a better one. It has the edge over things like the ZV-1 because it has the removable lenses uh, and the full gamut of the Micro Four Thirds lens system. But whatever it is, I think this is just a really good camera. Certainly worth checking out. Fantastic for the size and fantastic for the weight and the adaptability. And if, it, if, if you're doing any sort of video and you're not at the pro level of video, you're not in that sort of extreme bit, this is probably the camera I would suggest going for. It really is good. However, 
until the next time, there'll be another video, as I say, coming up on the still side of this. Until the next time, keep on taking your camera out, keep on taking your photos, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.